Hello, I'm Dr. Jack Nelson, the inventor, the patented inventor of the Compact Tenna. Uh, today I'd like to talk for just uh, several minutes about the 2040 micro antenna. Extremely small, 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch antenna that covers the 20 meters and the 40 meters HF bands. Uh, perhaps you've watched uh, the video by M Radio Concepts, Eric Hoffer. And you'd like to know, how is it possible to make the impossible realistic? Well, uh, I'll just have uh, three pages here to talk about, uh, to summarize things. The first page is about antenna sizes. They can go from very large to somewhat smaller. Uh, for example, we have full size, small, and micro. Full size are like tall verticals. They can be very tall. Even the tower itself can be an antenna. Um, we have wider antennas, uh, such as half-wave dipoles or uh, NFED half-wave antennas. Those are a couple of examples. Uh, we're looking at approximately 15 feet to 60 feet plus. This is arbitrary, but a substantial size. We have smaller antennas, magnetic loops. Many of you, of you are familiar with, uh, about 3 foot to 4 foot in diameter, for example. And here we have the micro by Compactenna, very, very small. I'd like to do some summary uh, on the small magnetic loop antenna because uh, in, in some ways it's the uh, closer thing uh, that uh, is in existence to this new novel antenna. And uh, there's a lot of information about it. Uh, perhaps this is helpful in, in summarizing and, and also giving some of the particulars that are uh, difficult to uh, find and find an understanding of uh, in your searches. Uh, the, the small magnetic loop antenna is very high current, very low impedance. You have to have an impedance matching system. It's also narrow band. That's very important. Compact antenna is not. It's very narrow band. Perhaps uh, 10 kilohertz, maybe 50 kilohertz. Typically, people talk about the struggles in constantly retuning or having a very expensive um, uh, device uh, to do that uh, automatically. There are various approaches to the impedance matching system. The step up transformer. Here we have a tiny loop and the Antenna itself, small loop. The tiny loop um, uh, couples uh, in the near field uh, to the main loop. The main loop has a variable capacitor there. All right, so in a circuit equivalent, this is what we have. We have a step-up transformer. Small number of coils, larger number of coils. This is L. This is the inductance of the antenna the uh, main loop itself. And then of course here we have the variable capacitor, the impedance uh, due to uh, radiation, the signal, and the impedance due to resistance, which is very small in this antenna. So that's why it's in parentheses. So that's one way to step up the impedance. We all know about L matching networks and whatnot. You'll see some of that in here. And variations on the theme. We know the gamma match the most common match system used for uh, uh, antennas, um, Yagi antennas, and, and many other antennas. All right, so the gamma match. And I've been uh, fairly inclusive here in, in this uh, circuit equivalent. I have the gamma portion and the uh, magnetic loop antenna portion here. Magnetic loop antenna portion here, very similar to here. We've already described it. And the gamma system here. We have the inductance here, we have the inductance here, and uh, of course here I have in parentheses a capacitor, a variable capacitor in fact. Sometimes there isn't a direct shunt connection here, but uh, a sleeve uh, with a capacitance uh, a junction. And uh, sometimes uh, in gamma matches even a variable capacitor is incorporated. Tuned coupling. This is interesting. Keep an eye on these different systems. 
And the, the last page is a very novel approach. All right. Uh, some shy away from the system because it's very touchy. <laughs> um, it's uh, uh, very straightforward, uh, but can be very touchy in balancing the uh, uh, two different uh, capacitor components here. Uh, note this. Note this. This is this capacitor here is here. This is the capacitor uh, with the uh, a loop itself here. So uh, this is uh, this is a parallel LC, and of course with the uh, impedance uh, due to radiation of the loop itself. All right. And what have we here? Now, this is not to scale, so this is actually of a smaller diameter, same frequency. And, uh, um, it, 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 of course, has a somewhat lower e efficiency. But, uh, and, and you notice you, you don't see any capacitors here. Um, it could be, but for simplicity's sake, we have a lumped parameters here. See, in, in this coil, and this happens to be a helical-type coil, we have uh, interwind capacitance as you go along the coil. So you have inductance and capacitance as you go on the coil, and of course these components here. Uh, so, 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 so here you have your interwind capacitance, here you have your inductance, and uh, oh, the, in this case, the impedance due to um, re resistance um, is not in parentheses because it becomes more significant, more substantial, which by the way, is, is lesser so uh, with the compact tenor that uh, uh, uses foiling in the magnetic field resonator as opposed to wire, and of course, with decreased resistance. Last slide. Last sheet. The compact tenna. Novel micro approach. Right, this is the essence of what's within the magnetic field resonator system. Uh, there are other components but this is the essence. What's important? More powerful fields with spiral configuration, spiral sheeting as opposed to uh, the helical uh, wire. Um, with, with the spiral, you have a very prominent inductance, more prominent. You have uh, more prominent um, uh, foil, uh, interwind capacitance, of course, the difference between wire versus foil, like two sheets for a capacitor, this is very important. So this, from an overhead view, is the 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch radome within this, the magnetic field resonator. We have the pigtail uh, coming here. This is also significant with select ferrite material and numbers and dimensions. It's important. What, what, um, what, what is the circuit equivalent of this? Well, it, it, it's essentially a stage fluctuating lumped circuit. Okay, so as you go along the spiral and you have your interwind capacitance and your inductance along the spiral, you go from a large, uh, larger inductance to, to less to less, but as you do that in reverse, you have small capacitance to larger to larger. So, so um, uh, th this in the long run is a stage fluctuating lumped circuit. Here, of course, is the uh, impedance due to uh, resistance, and we already talked about that. That's reduced with sheeting as opposed to wire. And, 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 and here we have the uh, impedance due to radiation uh, of the spiral foil itself. Okay, great. Oh, what's this? Oh, an added capacitor in order to get Impedance matching. Well, how, did, how, how does that work? Well, it's very broadband. This is very unique because this particular antenna on 20 meters, nominally, and, and there's instructions on the specification sheet as well as on the website, on 20 meters, you have nominally two to one SWR or less on the entire band. I mean, that's incredible. 350 kilohertz, 14.0 to 14.35. And, and, and on the 40 meter band, um, anomaly uh, two to one or less, um, in, in about 100 kilohertz. Um, 
uh, but but with um, a, a tuner, internal or external, of course on 20 meters essentially flat the entire band, and on 40 meters um, pretty much all, most if not all of the band with the internal tuner uh, or, or external tuner. Um, so you definitely got all of your modes covered, your your voice, your, your digital, these kind of things. Oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Well, we have um, uh, an added uh, uh, impedance due to um, radiation prime. Uh, radiation prime is of the pigtail, and 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 it plays it plays a significant role overall. So this is essentially not just a resonating but a radiating tank circuit. It's a beautiful thing. It's the magnetic field resonator. All kinds of positive characteristics and performance beyond, substantially beyond what would be expected. A great thing for space restricted uh, environments. I wrote something here because I, I, I think there's, there's, there's so much potential out there um, for us. You know, there's so much knowledge, um, so much information, so much information that's given to us. Um, uh, but you know, when, when you look at these kind of things, I've used for the most part conventional language, but but, but the key is in, in actually knowing, in visionary thinking, actually knowing, actually sensing that, that it isn't the way, right? Um, that, that's part of the, part of the uh, cognitive processes. Uh, the vision and, 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 and then going, um, you know, m more of an enlightenment thing and then developing cognitive uh, uh, processes around that. Uh, it's important uh, to learn how to tap into that sensing it uh, realm of understanding. You know, um, uh, learning to think, training your brain, um, uh, apply and adapt detailed practical applications for novel and improved results with known and theoretical physics. Make a difference. I think more of us can make a difference. I, I think there's there's so much information out there, but but you know, we are more than the equivalent of a biological AI. There is much more to us, uh, to our essence. There is, there is resonance with higher wisdom and uh, you know sometimes sometimes we just we need to stop and allow that to happen and then train our brain to process it further um, Einstein said sit stink sit and think um, Jesus said be still I just wanted to add that it's it's uh it's a wonderful thing, and uh, more of us more of us perhaps uh, could 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 be involved with that, um, beyond the deluge of, of all the input that we get. Yes, the brain is more than your neurons, dendrites, axons, biochemical spark-like effects. It's much more than that presence here. Uh, you can learn more about Compactena um, in, the, in the near and far fields uh, regarding Niels Bohr and Einstein. Um, Conejo Valley Amateur Radio Club in California did a wonderful production of a, a presentation that I gave. This is the uh, address and I'll, I'll include it uh, on the website uh, with this model. It's already on my website but I'll include it a link also on, on this particular model. Thank you so much.